All right, thank you so much, Coach. Uh, I'm excited to be here uh, at the university today. Um, I'm excited to be talking to you guys. Coach asked me to come and just talk to you guys for about 10 minutes today. Um, as football players, uh, most of you have probably been, uh, a coach has probably come up to you after a game or something like that and said, let me tell you something that's going to change your game. <laughs> Or at some point, somebody's come up to you and they've given you a tip, whether it was a stance on a line, whether it was, whether it was uh, the way you held the ball, whether it was the way you caught, maybe it was a move to, to shake a defender. Somebody said something to you that has changed the way you play football. Today, I don't want to tell you something that's going to change your game. I want to tell you something that's going to change your life. You say, Nick, what could you possibly have that could change my life? What, could, what, what do you have as a pastor? What do you have that could change my life? I mean, I'm a, I'm a college football player. I could have any girl in the college that I want. I, I'm probably going to make it to the NFL. My dreams are coming true. What do you have that I could want? Today I'm going to show you from the Bible, from God's word, from a book that was given from God to us, how we can be 100% sure that when you die, that you'll be on your way to heaven, to spend the rest of eternity with him. And there's only a couple things that you really need to understand. You need to understand that there is a God and that he loves you. The Bible says that God so loved the world. That means that everyone in this room, God loves. God is crazy about you. God adores who you are. In fact, the Bible says that God knows more about you than you even know about yourself. The Bible says that he knows how many hairs are on your head. God knows every detail about you because he created you and he loves you. He adores you. He's crazy about you. And because he loves you so much, he wants to have a relationship with you for eternity. He wants you to spend eternity with him in heaven. God wants that so bad, but there's a problem. And that problem is sin. The Bible tells us that we've all sinned. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You say, Nick, what in the world is a sin? Well, simply a sin is anything you think, say, or do that is against God's law. I wonder, have you ever been to a party? I know we're out at a college campus. I know kind of what goes on. Have you ever been to a party and maybe gotten drunk? Or maybe you're walking around campus and you see a girl walking around campus and you say, man, I would really love to have sex with that girl. Have you ever wanted something that someone else had that wasn't yours? Have you ever maybe been sitting in a class taking a test and you didn't know the answer to a question, so you just kind of peeked over at the next person's paper and wrote down the answer that they had? You cheated. You lied. And the Bible says that all of those things are sin. I want you to imagine real quick with me that, that your dreams come true. Let's say the next game, some, some scouts are at the game, and they pick you up, you make it into the NFL. You're in the NFL next season. Your dreams come true. You go through your first season of the NFL, and you have the best season of your life. I mean, you catch, let's, let's say for, for sake of this story that you're a receiver, you catch every ball that's thrown to you the entire season. Well, let's say you go through the season and you, you really, you never make a mistake with the ball. You always catch it. You lead the team in touchdowns. You lead the team in yards. You lead the team in catches. I mean, you are clearly the best player on this team. You make it through the playoffs and your first season, you make it to the, to the Super Bowl. And you play the best game of your life at the Super Bowl. I mean, you catch every ball that was thrown to you. You lead the team in touchdowns at the Super Bowl. I mean, you are clean. You come to the end of the game and everybody is congratulating you, saying, hey, great job, because everyone knows you're getting the MVP. We come to the end of the game and the coach stands up and he says, well, this is normally the time when I would announce the most valuable player of the year, but this season, we don't have one. And he steps down. You go up to the coach after the game and you say, Coach, why did I not get the MVP? I don't understand. Coach, I did everything right. I, thought, I mean, I caught every ball. Uh, coach, what, why didn't I get the MVP? 
coach says, well, this year there's a new standard for the MVP. And you had five flags this season. You didn't have a perfect season. So you can't get the MVP. Now we would say, wow, that, that's harsh. I mean, five flags, that's not even a lot of flags to have in a season. But guys, that's God's standard to get into heaven. You see, God can't let us into heaven with our sin. And no matter how much good you can do, see, a lot of you are just like that player, and you're going to God and you're saying, well, God, I've been to church once or twice in my life. I, 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 I've given to charities. I've, I've done so many good things in my life. So, God, that has to be enough to get me to heaven. But God says, <laughs> remember all the flags. You didn't have a perfect life. And because of that sin, the Bible says that the wages, the payment, what you deserve for that sin is death in a place called hell for eternity, forever. You say, Nick, what hope do I have then? The second half of that Bible verse is what you have. See, the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came down to this earth and lived a perfect, sinless life. The Bible says that he was tempted in every way we were, yet he never sinned. He never did anything wrong. He never lusted after that girl. He never cheated on that test. He never did anything wrong. He lived a perfect, sinless life. When he was 33 years old, he was crucified on the cross. Keep in mind, he was perfect, but he was crucified like he was a criminal. His hands were nailed to a cross and he went through the torment. But that wasn't the worst part of it. The worst part was that your sin, that lust, that envy, that hatred, was all put on Jesus. And when he died, when he shed his perfect sinless blood, he paid the price for your sin so that you didn't have to pay for it yourself. He died for you. Jesus was buried. He was dead. But then three days later, Jesus rose again from the grave, conquering sin and death, conquering the, the sin that you have in your life. He conquered it. It's done. It is finished. That's what he said on the cross when he died. You say, well, Nick, what do I have to do? I mean, if Jesus paid for it, what, what do I need to do? Guys, all you have to do is agree with God that you're a sinner. Agree with him that you've sinned against him, that you've broken his law. And believe in your heart that Jesus, God's son, lived a perfect life and died to pay the price for your sin. And call on Jesus Christ to forgive you and save you. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Amen. Everybody go ahead and bow your heads and close your eyes. I wonder how many of us in this room, you would say, Nick, you know, I've had a great season. But I just feel like there's got to be more to this life than football. You say, Nick, what you were saying today, I don't know for sure that I'm on my way to heaven. But I'd really, really love to accept that gift that Jesus paid for. If that's you today and you'd like to accept that gift, go ahead and raise your hand awesome. Guys, like I said, the only thing that you have to do is accept that gift. All you have to do is accept it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lead you in a prayer, and this prayer, it, it doesn't save you, but it's the belief, the faith in your heart that Jesus died for you, that saves you from your sin, and from spending an eternity in hell. 
you would like to accept that gift tonight, all you have to do is pray to God and say something like this, God, I know I'm a sinner. I agree with you that I've broken your law. But I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ, your son, died for my sin. That he was buried and that he rose again from the grave to conquer my sin. God, I accept that free gift of salvation that you offer through your son. So please come into my heart, forgive me of my sin, and save me. If you just pray that prayer and, and you meant it and you pray back to God, go ahead and raise your hand. See those hands? I'm going to pray. And we'll be done. Father, thank you so much for this time that I've had. Lord, I just thank you for just the guys in this room and just the friendships that I've been able to make with, with many of them. Father, I pray for those that made those decisions today that they would, they, they would go forward for you, that they would grow in their faith, that they would grow in their relationship with Jesus Christ. Father, I love you. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Thank you.